today's session of visual g forex we will be starting a fresh for the algorithm development using the indicator named kri relative index kri we will see how we can design and develop the algorithm using this uh, indicator which is quite old but uh, in recent past it hasn't been in uh, the uh, prominence earlier it was uh, widely used but uh, as new indicators were developed in course of time this uh, lost relevance but we will see how we can uh, optimize this indicator and uh, see whether we can uh, design a profitable algorithm using this uh, indicator so let us now head to the visual g forex board which has been developed by the decoscopy bank sa you will find this indicator listed amongst momentum indicators just below the directional movement index here it is we have to define these five input parameters depending on which we will get the output value and as you can observe from these inputs we also have to define the ma type moving average type depending on that the output value will differ and uh, i will briefly explain to you how we can go about this and uh, if you want to look at the technical aspects of this indicator how it is derived and uh, into its uh, details then i would uh, recommend that you refer to the earlier introductory video and in this session we will be mostly focused on the functional aspects of it so i won't uh, go into the technical uh, aspects of it and uh, we will be working on the hourly time frame here there is the euro usd chart on the hourly time frame and i have plotted the kri relative index and the idea is going to be fairly simple we want the trade to be initiated depending on the overbought oversold scenario and i will give you the brief idea of how we are utilizing these values so we want the kre indicator to start rising after having been in the negative territory and that will be the time to look for initiation of the buy trade and uh, here not only that we will be looking for the divergence so this shouldn't be the first instance where the kre relative index starts to rise but uh, rather than that it should be second or third uh instance and for that not only we are going to use the immediate uh, last hour's price action data but we will also be going back in time by six hour and we will uh, then compare the kre value of that point in time to the last hour's value and uh, then depending on that if there is divergence we will be looking to initiate the trade and for sell side we want the underlying instrument to have been in the overbought territory and whenever we see this kind of divergence where the earlier kri relative index value was higher and then it declined again it picked up and then where then uh, went on to decline again so this kind of uh, price instance we are looking at and also what uh, one more thing we can do we can also define the condition that there should be divergence so the last hour's closing value should be more than the closing value so a couple of hours back six seven hours back and uh, while we are looking for the buy trade similar divergence can be looked into so we will need the last hour's closing value to be lower compared to the prior hours uh, closing value so we can do the comparison here and uh, i think uh, we will need four kre indicator uh, blocks for this we will take last hour value and uh, the two hour uh, values prior to the last hour so in all we will need three hourly candlestick data and uh, the requirement for the buy trade is going to be that last hour kre value should be higher compared to the penultimate hours value but it should be lower compared to the kre relative index value three hours back so we will have to use this cluster of these uh, three blocks and then 
we will be going back six hours in time from the penultimate hour so we will have to take in to consideration i think almost approximately eight hours so eight minus two we will have the difference of six hours in between and uh, compared to that value the recent KRE value should be higher so that's how we are uh, planning to go about this and as i said we will need the price action to be on the lower side while looking for the buy trade and on the higher side when looking for the sell trade so we head back to the visual j forex board and on this we will be working with the on candle as our start point We will need logic, logical blocks first. And here the instrument subscription needs to be done. Default instrument should match on candle candle instrument and candle instrument in turn should match. Euro USD. So we will have to look for Euro USD here. Here it is. Question amount. Find at zero this I will change to hourly time frame so the candle period will be hourly look back period will be of one shift one time period is 30 I will keep it as it is default value here we will use SMA And as I said, we are going to need four of this. Default instrument remains as it is. Red will be changed to hourly. Shift two. Moving average SMA. Here also similar changes need to be carried out. Here I will use look shift value of eight. So the interval between these two blocks will be of six hours. Let's say me. Okay, now we have to use the get historical candle. 
for that i will have to use info component last tower one hourly this will be shift two and one more hourly get historical candle of shift value 8 to do the comparison between this one and the 6 hours interval I will change to 8 okay. and uh, then to pinpoint the exact entry point we also need to in second get historical candles with the shift value of 1 and 2 respectively Okay, so our uh, blocks are ready, which are going to be used while uh, defining the conditions. Now, let us again head back to the chart and we will have to start working on the buy side trade. And uh, there, we will have to carry out the comparison. And here, to make sure that there is enough price momentum also i think uh, one condition can be said that uh, last hours uh, closing value should be higher than its opening value by certain amount so that will make sure that there is enough of buying momentum and i think uh, the pip difference of say we can observe and see what is the ideal pip difference and since we are looking at uh, good enough price momentum, I think uh, 10 pips difference would be good enough for the Euro USD. Of course, it is going to be changing time to time, and uh, 10 pips might be too much of a requirement on some days, while it might be not uh, good enough on other. So, we have variable as volatility and that is going to be true for almost all the instrument but this is a representative value if you want you can use a different value also so i will bring in the mathematical component and define 10 pips and this is going to be fairly simple All you need is default instrument pip size and multiply it with a new variable with value of 10. Okay. And here you have to carry out the calculation A1 into A2. 
and this will be minimum big difference which we will set as a criteria and in next session then uh, we will have to look at the actual price difference between the closing value of this candle 20 which has uh, the hourly time period and the look back period of 1 and whenever that uh, condition will be made whenever its closing value will be more than 10 pips higher than its opening value only then the execution will uh, go through provided other uh, conditions are in place so that's how we want to proceed with this algorithm and uh, that's it for uh, this session in next session we will uh, start the setup for the execution of the buy trade thank you all for joining in do come back next time till then have a fabulous time ahead and do subscribe to the Ducoscopy webinar channel to stay updated on market developments goodbye